G'day and welcome to MW Laser, my name's Matthew. I've had many requests to demonstrate the multiple origin function of the Rowita controllers. Now there's a lot of confusion around this feature and I hope that in this video I can explain the workings of the multi-origin function and give an example of where you might use it. Firstly, let me say that when you do enable the multi-origin function in the regular way that you use your machine by pressing origin on the machine to start the job from that position and then starting the job, that is disabled. It would use the multiple origin number one in the sequence to uh, start that job. So if you do want to manually start a job at a position, you need to disable the multi-origin first. So what is the multiple origin function? Well, it's probably best explained like this. You can have four origins that you manually set on your machine and it would cycle through the origins for each re next job that you start. So let's just do an example. Let's say we want to do a square cut out of four corners on a workpiece. We set up the origin for origin one, two, three and four. Then when we start cutting, it would start cutting at origin one. The next time you start that job, it would cut at origin two and the next job would start at three, four, and so on, and repeat back around, and it would keep doing it until you finished. If you stop a job at origin three, and you wanna start again at origin one, you have to manually tell the controller to start next at origin one, otherwise it would continue on to the next origin it has in its sequence, which is origin four. Now, the number of origins that you set will depend on exactly what you're doing, but you can have up to four, but you don't have to enable all four. Now the multiple origin function can be useful for repetitive work, or you may have different parts of a job where you wanna do different things. So you might wanna cut a circle in, the in origin one, you might wanna engrave at origin two, and you might wanna do something else at number three and number four. So you can have four different files, and you start file one at origin one, and then you select the second file, and of course the next one in the sequence is the uh, origin two. So it would start that job at origin two. The next file that you start would start at origin three and it would keep going in sequence. Now you can disable an origin, so you could disable origin three, so the sequence would become origin one, origin two, origin four, and then back to one, two, four, until you re-enable origin three. So like I said, it's a little bit hard to explain, so let's get down to the RDC 6445G controller and I'm gonna show you a demonstration on that, on how to set it up and how it works. After that, I'm going to show you the uh, RDC 6432G controller from CloudRay and I'll show you how to change the settings on that with the multiple origins. So here we have the Ruida RDC 6445G controller and I'm going to show you how to use the multi-origin on this controller. So first of all, we can press menu and go down to origin set. Press enter. And we have the option here of multi-origin enable, and we have four multi-origins that we can use. So first of all, when we press enter, it will highlight multi-origin enable. When this is enabled, the origin button on the keyboard for your normal use of positioning your laser, pressing origin and starting the job from that position is disabled, and it will use the origins that are enabled in a sequence from one to four, and then repeating that sequence again from one to four, whichever ones are enabled. Now to enable origin one, we um, select this one here, press enter, the light goes red and we get the finger move across to the instructions, which is press shift, move the cursor or your axis to where you want that origin. So I'm gonna try keeping everything in frame. So I'm gonna move over here and we'll go up a little bit and we're gonna have this one as our first origin. So now the instructions are to press origin and press shift. So that's our first origin that's enabled. So then we go down to enable origin two and we press enter. Again, shift, moving the cursor. So we might go across to here and we want that one as our origin. So we can press origin and then shift. Then just take note, you do have the coordinates of your X and Y there if you wanna be accurate and um, you wanna use absolute coordinates for these origins. You can actually look at what your uh, axis is there. Now we're gonna enable origin three and we'll press enter, shift, move the arrow where we want our um, axes to be. So in this case, I might just uh, choose something random here in the middle for this demonstration. Then we'll press origin and shift. So now we've got three origins enabled. We can also enable the fourth, so I may as well do that now. 
Depending on the job you're using, you may only want two multiple origins or three or four. So then we can press enter to enable it, shift, move it where we want, and we'll put four down the bottom here, and we press origin and shift. So now we have the uh, multi-origin enabled with four different multiple origins. The start origin says zero, but if we um, have these multiple origins enabled, then zero, which is our manual origin, is actually disabled. So the start origin zero is disabled and it will automatically start at origin one. So what I'm going to do now is escape out. And I'm going to load a file. So I've got uh, three different files here that I might want to process on this um, piece of work. And we know that it's going to start at origin one first. So let's go and choose a square and we press enter. So at origin one, I might want to repeat this square. And for this demonstration, I might just use the square for all four origins just to show you how it works. So if I press start, I've actually disabled the uh, laser at the moment. So it's just going to move the axis just to reduce noise in the workshop. So I press start. It will complete the job at origin one. When I press start again on that same job, it will then go complete that job at the second origin and so on. If you want to know what origin you're up to and you want to see where it's going to start the next job, you can go into menu, go down to origin set, and we can see that it's going to start at origin one. So it's finished number four, it's going to go back to number one. So if we had stopped this after it had finished uh, number two origin, it would show number three down the bottom here, which means that we can also tell it where we want to start from on the next job. So we might want origin enable four to be uh, at number three to be the next one we do. So we can press enter and change to number three and press enter. And then if we escape out, next time we start that job, it will start at origin three. And obviously number four is after that. So next time we start, it will complete that job at origin number four. So this is good if you want to do repetitive work. You might have four different origins set up across uh, the y-axis and you can just uh, rotate pieces through those jobs. Or you can also use it for different jobs. So uh, let's go file and we'll choose a circle and we press enter. When we start, it will start back at origin one because the last one was origin four. And now we might want to do an engraving job on this piece at origin number two. So we'll go down to uh, some text that we want to engrave and press enter. Now when we start this, it will start engraving at origin two. So it's finished its engraving at origin two and next we might want to do a square at origin three. So we can select our square file, press enter and now start. And as you can see, it will just keep cycling through those origins for each different job that you use. Now you can also disable origins after they've been enabled. Uh, so you can take one out of the sequence. So let's take origin two out of the sequence. So we'll go menu, origin set, press enter, and go down to origin two, and we can turn it off. So the red light goes off, and we can see that the next origin is going to start at is number four. Let's change this to number one. Press enter and now press escape. And we'll choose the circle. So we'll go file. We'll choose a circle that we want to start and it will start at origin one. So we press play. We've disabled origin two, which was over the far side over there at the top. So now we press start, it will go to origin three. And it will just keep going through that cycle until you're finished. Now, if you want to move up here and say you wanted to do that circle at that place where you press origin and you press start, it won't accept it because it will go to the next origin in the multi-origin, which is number one. So 
So to enable your origins from the uh, your manual origin from the control panel, we need to go back into the menu, go down to origin set, and we need to turn off those origins. So we only have to turn off the top one and it will disable all. So now if we press escape, and now if we move our work head to where we want to start, and we press origin and start, it will start back normal as it was before and it will be in that same spot. So this is the CloudRay Ruida RDC 6432G controller. And I'm going to just show you how to set the multiple origins on this controller as well. But I'm not going to go through the demonstration of how it worked. This is sort of how that worked on the previous controller. I just want to show you how to set those origins, but the functions of those origins works the same way. It's just the setting up that's different. So we press menu, press enter on machine set, enter on origin set, enable the multi-origin, scroll down to origin enable one and press enter. Go across to the setting and press enter. Now we can move the X and Y into the position of our first origin. And we can see here it shows us the X and the Y current position is 0, 0. We might have that as our first origin. So what I might do is just move it a little bit in a bit for this demonstration. So we have our first origin here. And once we've selected the origin we want, we then press the origin button. Now in this controller, the origin button is this orange dot in the middle. So we press origin and it then changes it to the, uh, the position up the top and then we can press escape. So that's our first origin set. Then we can go down to enable the second origin, scroll across to setting and we can then use either the existing setting or we can make a new setting. So we'll go across and I'll set this one the thousand by uh, 69.3 as our next origin. So I'll press origin. So it saves that as our setting, and now we can press escape. Then we can go down to the third one and do exactly the same thing. So I'll quickly do those. Enter, setting. We use that origin, press enter, it saves it, so then we can escape. Then we can go down to the fourth origin, exactly the same, across to setting, press enter, and move it across. Press origin, and then press escape. The uh, system works exactly the same way as before. As I mentioned, if I was to start a job, then it would start that job at origin one, the next one at origin two, three, and four, and so on, back to one through that sequence. So that's how we uh, enable the multi-origin and the same feature of pressing origin to set a job to do it manually. We would then have to go into manual, go into machine settings, go back to origin set, and turn off the multi-origin enable. Then we can press escape and we can use the origin button to set the way we would normally run the machine by setting and then starting a job. So what I'll do now is just quickly show you one use that you could use this multiple origin settings for. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go into the menu and I'm going to set um, those machine origins. So first of all, in this uh, example, I'm going to have the multi-origin enabled and origin one I'm going to have the setting um, of position 00. So I'm going to set the origin at 00 and um, press escape. Now origin 2 will have a, a different location, so we're just going to move it. Say you did another workpiece over here, and we'll set that as the origin and um, escape. And then origin 3, you might uh, use regularly down the front of the machine, so we'll go setting and we'll move that down here. So you might have a piece that you manually configure all the time at origin three, and it's always the same size, so you want the origin set on the corner of that origin. So we'll save this as origin three, and um, press escape. And origin four, you might want to always use in uh, this position over here, so we'll change the setting of origin four, and we'll move it over to that corner of origin 4. This is just roughly just to give you an idea of how it works. So we set that origin and press escape. So now we have four multiple origins enabled and obviously if we now were to start those files as I demonstrated it would work through that sequence. But uh, we might want to just save these origins for where we want to start different jobs. 
So for example, uh, the first job that you might want to start, we're going to disable now. So I've saved all those origins. What I'm going to do now is go in and disable origin 3, 2 and 1. So I've just disabled origin uh, 2. And disabled origin 3 and origin 1. So now the only origin that is set is origin 4. So now when I start a job, if I um, go back out to the menu and I select my file, I'm going to select the circle, press enter. Now when I start that job, it will just do that circle at that location, which means I can then put my next work piece in and do the same thing on it and start that job. And we can only do origin 4. And then if I wanted to start working at origin uh, number 3, I could go back into the menu, go into the machine settings for the multiple origin, disable origin 4, so it's been disabled, and now I'm going to enable origin 3. Press enter and press escape. Now we don't need to change the settings and reposition it because the settings are saved of where that last origin was. So now if I move my work to a set position, I only have the one origin 3 enabled. When I press start now on my um, controller, we will start at origin 3. It's always in that same spot. So I can continue processing jobs at origin 3 without the need to uh, reset it up. Again, if I want to cycle through between origin 1 and 3, I could also go back into the menu, go into the machine settings, into that origin, the multi-origin settings, re-enable origin 1 by pressing enter. Now, I may mention in, um, that on the 6445G controller, if you press enable origin 1 again, rather than go through the shift sequence to reposition, if you press escape, it saves it as that last origin that you set in that location. So now we know that the um, starting origin is going to be at origin 3, 1, 3, 1. So we're going to be cycling between these two origins. So if I um, escape out now and press start, it would cycle 3. I could then put my workpiece up where my origin 1 is. And again, it's just rough for this demonstration. And press start, and it would then go to the next origin in sequence. So it's handy if you want to have set origins for different jobs on your machine, and then when you're finished and you want to go back to the manual origin setting, disable the multi-origin setting on the controller, and it's back to the regular method of setting the origin to start your work. So one thing I do like about the new CloudRay Ruida RDC 6432G controller is that when I disable a, uh, an origin and I want to just use the other origins, when I want to re-enable that origin, it saves those settings and I can see those setting coordinates on the display itself. And then when I press enable, it will enable at my previous settings unless I press origin to save a new origin over the top of that uh, origin 2, for example. On the RDC 6445G controller, those settings are saved for that if you enable or disable, but it doesn't display what the coordinates of the X and Y axis are. So to re-enable it, you would press the uh, enable button, and rather than pressing the shift and relocating the uh, axis to where you want it, if you just press escape at that point, it saves it at the last known origin two that you had saved. The 6432G controller actually shows me those coordinates and uh, makes it uh, easier to use. So it's just a little bonus with that new controller displaying those coordinates for you. But the function is still the same. You can enable, disable, but you just don't have to reset up uh, that uh, axis uh, coordinates. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of new videos that I release in the future. And I've also got some documentation on my website that you can download and uh, follow up for the settings of these two controllers. Now, I will also note that the Trosen controllers and other controllers do handle the multiple origin functions differently. So this uh, may not work exactly the same for other brand controllers. So thanks for watching, and until next time, take care. Cheers.